Stassi, thank you so much for joining us on the Remodeling Podcast. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. You are like my TikTok model soul sister. (laughs) I'm so happy to have you here. We just did a full hour on Stassi's podcast and we talked about so many wonderful things. I'm so excited to have you on here. First things first, what I would love for you to do, I know you through and through and have been a fan for many years, but for anyone listening, can you share a little bit about who you are and your background? Okay. Um, My name is Stassi Schroeder-Clark. I have two children. One of them's three. One of them's four months old. I feel like I'm best known for being on a reality show, Vanderpump Rules. (laughs) I have a podcast, Straight Up with Stassi, that I've been doing for like eight or nine years now, for forever. And I have two New York Times bestselling books. That is quite a bio. That is some strong stuff. I really like want to talk to you about kind of like your career and life trajectory because I find it very, very interesting. And you and I really bonded, I feel like, over our content and pregnancy and postpartum. Like we are in the thick of it at the same time. So I'm so happy that we're here and coming together. The first thing I want to ask you, because I feel like your career on reality TV is like my modeling career. It's like a past Mm -hmm. life for us. And we're like just building upon this like massive kind of foundation that we have. So how did the reality TV thing start for you? Oh my gosh, Emily. Okay. So, well, it's really, really embarrassing. Um, when I was like, I talked about how I went through an awkward phase. Okay. Like I was not like a cute teenager. I just wasn't. My dad really wanted to be on the amazing race. They had a family edition when I was 16 years old. He put my awkward ass on the amazing race. So like I did a competition reality show when I was a teenager. Then when I moved to LA um, for school, someone like asked me, like someone reached out in casting and was like, you know what, we're, we're doing this show called Queen Bees and we feel like you'd be great for it. So I was like, YOLO, I've done reality TV before, sure. So I did that and that was embarrassing again. And then I just started working at a restaurant that just so happened to like, like, months in or a year in after I had been working there, they were like, we want to make a reality show maybe about this this restaurant. Would you be interested? I'm like, yeah, I've done two of them. <laughs> I've done two. <laughs> Sign me up. So it's so like I just you know, was destined for it. <laughs> did you know though that you wanted anything to do with media entertainment, modeling, acting, anything like that? Or were you just kind of like going with the flow and you were like, these opportunities are kind of like falling in front of me and I'm going to take it and run with it? Oh no, I was like a big musical theater person in high school. So like I, I was in every play, every musical, I was auditioning for things that like that were being filmed in New Orleans. So like that was entertainment was always a part of, of me and my vibe. Once I moved to LA, like uh, so much went down in, in those years where I was like, what do I want? Do I want to be an actor? Do I want to be a host? What is it that that drives me. And when Vanderpump Rules landed in my lap, I was still trying to figure out what it is that really I wanted. I kind (laughs) of love hearing that though. Cause like, I feel like, I mean, from your, from watching you on reality TV, like you're a star and you made for such great TV. So that actually like painting that picture is helpful because I'm like, okay, she knew how to entertain a group. Like you had it in your bones. So from a reality TV perspective, what do you feel like you learned the most from like that part of your background that like kind of catapulted you into so many other things, your book, your podcast. There's so many things, but like, are there any key takeaways from that part of your life that you're like, you know what? I really learned a lot here and it's like X, Y, Z. Yes. Um, it's that being completely honest and transparent is so incredibly helpful when you are trying to have a career where it's about either entertaining or connecting with people. You know, like, I think people liked to watch me, whether they didn't like me or or not, but they liked to watch me because I didn't really overthink anything. It was just, I'm going to say what I would normally say if, if cameras weren't here, you're going to see all my ugly stuff, but you're also going to see the things that I like about myself. You're, you're going to see it all. And I'm not going to try and pretend to be something that I'm not. And I feel like that's, also what's helped me in terms of podcasting and writing a book. People just want to, they want to connect to something real. Yes. Really. And uh, audiences, listeners, readers, they can smell bullshit. So I just feel like people want real authentic stuff. That's actually such a good point. And it, like you say it in such a nice, simple way. It's true. Like people just want authenticity so badly. And you brought that to the table in like such an entertaining way. But I am curious because I feel like 
when I watched you on TV and I'm thinking of you like you're a kid and I think of myself yeah. as a model and I also was a kid. What did it feel like going through all of that, you know, being on TV when you're just a kind of like a kid growing up? I don't know any different now. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I, I didn't. I didn't know any different. I like, I did this show at, you know, my senior year of high school. And then like, I did this other one when I was in college. And then this happened that I, I don't know how I would be, how life would differ, you know, it's such a that's boring such a answer, point. but like, I just wouldn't know the difference. That's, that's such a good point. I guess like when I reflect back to on like my modeling career, I'm like, that's the only way that I knew it. But then I look at other people who had like normal lives and like went to college and were like partying in frat basements. And I'm like, well, it looks a bit more wholesome than some of the things that I was getting up to, (laughs) but it is what it is. I want to shift gears because I feel like we've connected so much on the motherhood front. We became moms around the same time. We both have two kids. You have a four month old. I have a nine month old. For motherhood, what was the entry into motherhood like for you when you had your first? How did you feel? And what was that identity shift like for you? Okay. The identity shift is is fucking wild. I think it's so different for you and me because, well, yours, I guess you weren't fully in COVID. I was fully in COVID during my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I entered into COVID one person. Like I, I walked into my house as one person and then spent a year in that house and then exited that house another person with a child. So like I feel like I don't I'm trying to figure out what the world is like still now. I'm like where do people go? What do people wear? How do people speak? How do people text? What's the vibe? What's what's the what's the vibe? Because I I entered in this one way. It's not like I experienced my first pregnancy just like out doing the normal things that I would normal do. Like I was we were all locked in our houses in ourselves. So like we were just here at home. So it's been a mind fuck, honestly. It's that is such a good way to put it. And I also feel like just in general, COVID has done that to all of us. And I don't know if yeah. we fully process that yet. Mm-mm. Like even when I think about getting dressed, I'm like, I don't know how to do that anymore. Like now we're what all are, getting dressed up and go, where are you going? Like where's what? everyone going? Where is everyone going? The traffic that I see in LA, I'm like, where are you guys going? Like, cause I, I don't leave my house that often, but like when I do, like, I'm like, it's so weird. You know, what's so funny. So I went to lunch the other day for the first time because I had a friend in town. And so I'm like, okay, let's go do brunch. I like carved out time to do that. And we went to a restaurant I'd never been before. And I'm like, I looked at my friend. I'm like, it's so crazy that like, that all these people are just like going to this restaurant every day and they're having lunch every day and talking about things. And just, it's a whole world that I don't even know. Look how cute all these people are doing their daily lunch or like routines. You know what I mean? It was so crazy to me. I'm like, why aren't you guys all at home or at work? (laughs) (laughs) I just, I don't know. Every, I, I don't know. It completely resonates with me. I feel the same way, like coming out of motherhood. And I feel like you're already like kind of hibernating when you become a mom, especially a first time mom. And then all of a sudden you're like meant to reappear. And it's like, I'm yeah. so confused what everyone is doing here now. Um, I feel like something we've really connected on is like kind of the identity and how different you feel towards your body, about your body, in your body after you have kids. Can you share a little bit about how you felt and your relationship with your body and how it's changed since you gave birth both times. Well, I mean, we've touched, we touched on this in my podcast where it's like, we're told that we should be like, Oh my God, I love my body. Look what it just did. Like be gentle with yourself. Let it rest. Let yourself heal. Like, you know, Oh, look, cool. I get it. I, I fully understand. My brain is processing that my body did an incredible thing. Like I I know that up here, but I don't feel that confident or proud of my body right now. Like I I that's I can't help how I feel in my heart, in my soul and I don't feel that great about myself because I don't recognize myself anymore. It just feels like I was a host for this other being for so long. And then all of a sudden that being leaves and not only do we take care of it, love it, live for it, but then we're left with this like shell of a body that we, that doesn't look the way that it used to. 
and but we still want to feel good about ourselves, but we can't fit in the same things. But then you also don't want to go spend a whole lot of money on buying new clothes. It's just, what do you do? You, you know, so what true. do you post postpartum life is just so rough. And and again, I know we should appreciate our bodies. I do, but like I also I don't like it right now. <laughs> I, I, I completely right understand. Do you have any tips, like anything that you tell yourself, a mantra, anything that you do that like helps you during this period when like, for me, it's like the confidence is low, like my morale is low. And there are just mm -hmm. like a few things or a few people that I can do or see that actually like help me get through it. Like, do you feel like you have that the second time around? Um, I think the only, honestly, the only thing that I tell myself when I feel low is that I did it once, I can do it again. Like, that, like that's really what it is. Like, I did it once. It was hard. It took a long time, but I did it. So whenever I feel like, fuck, this isn't going as quickly as I wanted it to go, or I'm not, you know, I still don't fit in these jeans or whatever, I'm like, it's okay. Eventually, it'll happen. We did it before. You know, we could do it again when you said like, should I buy new clothes? And I know that's like a ridiculous, like privilege to be like, I'm just going to go buy all new clothes. But like, I just did a closet clean out. And I was like, I have to keep all these like giant clothes. Like I'm not getting rid of them. Cause what if I get pregnant again? And I refuse to like enter that period again, where I have nothing to wear. Like I feel yeah. so possessive <laughs> of like that yeah. time and trying to protect myself during that time, because I'm like, just walking into it. And you're like, I have like two pairs of leggings that fit. Like if mm -hmm. that, and like one large sweater and I'm hanging on by a thread here. Like it's yeah. just, it's so hard like during that time. But I'm, I, I'm the exact same way that I keep, I always tell myself, first of all, this is temporary. And second of all, I've done this before. I'll do it again. People have done it before me also, and they'll do it after yeah. me. Like there's a will, there's a way. Um, and also like my main priority and I try not to bully myself is like when I feel good, I'm a better mother. And like, yes. that's all I'm trying to achieve here. So yes, tr like truly not to be shallow, not to sound vain, not all of those things, but it, it's, it's natural to when you feel like you you're presenting something that you, that you like to feel good, which is why like I have to put on makeup every day because when I pass a mirror, if I don't, and I see like my rosacea or psoriasis on my face, like I get down. I don't like the mm -hmm. way that that looks. So I'd rather just cover a few things up. It just does wonders for my self-esteem, which makes me more fun to be around, honestly. I know. And I think it's, it's, it's okay. And it's good to share that because I feel like as, as a mom, you're kind of made to feel guilty for doing anything and taking care of yourself, but actually like taking those few small moments and they count as self-care truly does help. Um, so I'm glad that you say that and you share that because like, I feel the exact same way. I am curious though, cause you had your second, like, I'm kind of shook that you had a baby four months ago. Like you look amazing. First of all, like you're like, so with mm -hmm. it, like, I feel like at four months, like I am still very shaky. Is there a difference between first postpartum and this postpartum? Like, do you feel different energetically? I mean, I know that I did, but I'm curious for you. Um, emotionally it was harder and mentally it was harder. Like the first mm. couple of months, yeah. I like I didn't suffer any postpartum depression with Hartford, no, nothing like that. I think can we were like obviously I had some down days, like th every new mom does, where you 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 don't understand yeah. why you feel sad, all of that stuff. It's it's overwhelming. There's anxiety, but this time around, it felt it it felt way harder the first couple of months. I don't know why. Maybe huh. because like. I don't know, two is just so much where it's like I was used to being able to tap out and have my husband step in and I was used to being able to spend more time with my husband and now it's like one of us is on one of them. So it felt like, wow, this is a real change. Like this is a yes. really huge shift. So that has been difficult. But in terms of like having my shit together and like being out there and doing things, I just made it my mission because I... I know that that's like what makes me feel good about myself, like to get yeah. back to where to feel like myself and to get back to where I was before. Not that I'll ever get back there, but to just yeah. feel like I am my own person. Like this might ruffle a few feathers, but like I tried so hard breastfeeding with Hartford. I, I tried for three months. Like I, I pumped for so long. Like I, I, I didn't produce enough milk. So I always had to supplement like it was so hard and so depressing and I hated pumping. I felt so isolated. Like instead of waking up and like going and hugging my baby, like I was pumping and I'm like, what the fuck is this? So this time around, I'm like, I'm going to give myself a week. And if I feel depressed, 
I'm going to stop. And I felt depressed. Oh. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because I would rather be a happy mom and a happy wife. Like I'd want my family to be around a happy person instead of breast milk. Like that's just, oh my God. that's I, just it. I mean, I feel the exact same way. I like fought tooth and nail the first time. And the second time I just reached a point. I mean, it is like such a massive sacrifice. And it also made me like so psychotically depressed. So I was like, this just like, isn't working the second time around, but I still remember feeling like such immense guilt, like both times. Yeah. And you're like, I, I just feel like I'm never gonna like get, find my way out of this without getting through like this stint of guilt. But for you, like, I feel like it sounds like with number two and in general, I sense like this drive from you. Like, I feel like you're like zesty and ready to go and ready to get it. Like how has your feelings and your point of view on your career changed after having kids? Like we kind of talked about this on your podcast, but I feel like, I mean, you wrote two books, like that's huge. Like where do you get this motivation? And do you have a vision for this, like your life and like, who is Stasi and your career? And like, after having kids, I'm just like brain dead. Like I need to understand. Yeah. No, I regret going back to work like two weeks after I gave myself two weeks after I had <laughs> this baby. And I was like, that was dumb, but you're always scared <laughs> of falling behind especially in this industry. You're always like with social media, with podcasting, with, with anything that's going on, you're always scared of fall, falling behind. So I was scared of that. And I really regretted it because I, I just, I was not ready in it. And I think that's also what made me kind of depressed and anxious where I was like, I was resentful that I had committed to so much when I really just wanted to be with my new baby, you know? Um, but now after having kids, the way that you know, I view my career, it shifts all the time. I don't have like, I'm not somebody that's like, I have a five year plan. Like, that's not, yeah. I, I don't have that. I like to focus on one thing at a time and do it well. And also, it's just what I want for myself is to like, you know, be Chris Jenner, provide a yeah. great life for my family. <laughs> I want to be able to like give my family, provide my children with the opportunities for them to be whoever they want. Like that's what really drives me. So when I start working on something new, I'm like, this is just another step to Chris generating the shit out of life. <laughs> Wait, I literally love that mantra so much. Like I'm genuinely so inspired by that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> That is the dream. Like that is the vision. I'm going to Chris Jenner the hell out of my life and for my children. Um, because I just feel like for myself after having kids, like I feel so lethargic, like mentally, yeah. spiritually, emotionally. And I feel like with you, you have your podcast, you have your book, and it just looks like the dream is like mapped out. Like you're coming back to it and you're doing it. So I found that like very inspiring. Thank you. Well, like, I don't feel like that every day. So just know <laughs> that most days I don't feel like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Noted. Um, I do. I want to talk about your books very much so and your most recent book. Can you share a little bit about it and the premise and how it came to be? Okay. Well, I'm working on my third, my third right now. No way. And yes. And, um, it's kind of, so basically I have, well, this will be my third. So they're basic bitch handbooks. It started off with next level basic because I'm like, I am a full blown basic bitch. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This shouldn't be seen as something that's negative. I just feel like being a basic bitch is just like liking what you like and being unapologetic about it and leaning in and who cares? Like if it's dorky or if like, it's not, chic or cool or different or mysterious. It's like, who gives a fuck, you know? So like I started off that first book with being like, let's lean in. This is the basic bitch handbook. And then my second book, Off With My Head, I wrote during COVID 2020 was a really rough year. And I, I felt I had a lot of moments where I felt like I was, I personally felt like I was at my own rock bottom and I, you know, had lost a lot of things. And I was like, I have to write about what I know. I had started writing a different second book. And so I scratched all of that. Like that was scrapped all that. That was not going to happen. And I'm like, I'm going to write about like digging yourself out of a hole. So like how to fucking cope when you feel like you're at your own personal rock bottom in a basic bitch way. So it's the basic bitch handbook to surviving rock bottom. And now whereas this one 
it's still like a basic bitch handbook, but it's about this new phase of my life and things that I've realized. And I haven't fully really discussed what it's fully about yet, but these books are always just kind of where I'm at in my head. Cause it's like, you just write what you know. That's the only way I know how to do it. I mean, I feel like you say that so casually. Did you have like the writer in you from the start though? Like, I feel like you're casually like, I'm working on my third book. Did you know you wanted to be a writer? Like, do you feel like, how did you just start writing a book? Yeah, no, I went to school for writing. I have my bachelor's okay. degree in writing. Yeah, okay. so it, it wasn't just like, it wasn't just random. I remember like being this little Hollywood club rat, you know, 2010, 2009, around that time period. And I have this fake, like this book proposal that I wrote back then that's like still on my computer, which it's like so cringy now that I look back on it. But it was a how-to guide. And it was like how to fake it until you make it, which is crazy because I had not made it in any way. So what the (laughs) fuck was I even talking about? But it was almost like I manifested writing these like these cheeky handbooks because like I tried to make write one when I was like 20 years old. I don't know. I think it's because I just read a lot of Cosmo (laughs) growing up. I mean, it's just really inspiring. Like, at least for me, like, I just feel like if I was like, I'm going to go write a book, like the level of imposter syndrome that I would have. And I'm sure I would have. No, I'm not sure. I'm like, I'm sure I would have something to say. That is not true. I'm not sure that I would have anything of value to say. But did you have any feelings like that? Because your background's kind of more in reality TV. And then you're making like this big shift into like writing a book. Yeah. um, I mean, first of all, I feel imposter syndrome. 24-7. 24-7. Like there's never yeah. a moment where I feel like I deserve this. I am worth it. I'm so talented. Like th- there is never a moment where I feel like I'm worthy of being where I'm at. So like imposter syndrome, I just like don't think that's ever going to go away. Um, but yes, I do worry if like, like who the fuck do I think I am to be giving advice? That type of thing. Like yes. what makes me the authority on anything? But I also make sure to write that in my books to be like, I am quite literally not an authority on anything. This is just my thoughts, my feelings, my vibe, what I would do, what I have done. And I'm comforted by the fact that I've had a podcast for so long. So I feel really connected to my listeners. Like I've met so many of them, you know, at meet and greets and things like that. And, and I hear from them. And, and so I know we have this like connection. So like, I know I'm like, they're relating to it. So I just remind myself that like there are other people that are going through what you're going through and they're going to want to hear this or read this. I just have to tell myself that. I feel like what's so awesome about you and like, even like from the beginning of your career, talking to you right now in your books, your podcast, like you're so unapologetically, authentically you, at least that's how it seems. Like is there, where do you get that confidence from? Cause sometimes I'm like, I don't want people to like know who I am. I'm scared. Like you have like a, a certain like presence that I think is really cool and admirable. That's so nice. And thank you. But I will say I struggle with that now because I feel like who I am now, like, again, we touched on this too, is like, yeah. is that someone that's, that's, valuable in this industry now. Like I worry, like I have to be myself. So like, that's the only way I just like know to be, I can't pretend to be that girl I was on Vanderpump Rules. And like, if that's Mm going to let a few people down, it's going to let a few people down. But like, it's, it's the only way I, I know to survive. Like, like that's how I survive is just being able to like live loudly. That is so wild and weird and crazy. And I don't know. (laughs) No, it's fine. It makes sense. I, I, it's, it's a compliment. It's a question. It's everything kind of wrapped up into one. But I just felt like it was really like something that I picked up on about you. But also, well, you just, mentioned you have think of, think about the people that you you enjoy talking to. It's because you're like, wow, like there's no facade. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like we're really the only way to really connect is to be truthful in any yeah. situation at all. So like, you might as well be yourself and connect with a fewer amount of people than pretend to be somebody else for the sake of maybe connecting with more. Totally. You know, you're totally, totally like Chris Jennering me right now. Like I'm inspired. I feel like I'm at like a, <laughs> yes, let's do it. We all need to live our best Chris Jenner lives. 
Exactly. Um, so you mentioned you had this, your podcast stuck is a very long time, nine years, but you also started a podcast with your husband and I want yes. to know more about that. What's it called and what is it about? Okay. So it's called the good, the bad, the baby. We started it right after I had my first. So like we had been planning it like during COVID. Um, and it's, it's really like, it's about our lives. So it's kind of like an audio reality. You know, we're talking about the things that we're going through as new parents and that's what it is. And let me tell you, it gets working with your husband. It gets, <laughs> gets stressful. It gets hard. It gets hard, working but it's also one of my favorite. Yes. But it's also one of my favorite things. It's like such, it's so nuanced because I love that we have this together. It's so fun to be able to like come and have a conversation and connect like that. But at the same yeah. time, working with your partner is also the worst. You know, I feel like that would be really, really difficult because you're not only working with your partner, you're also taught like in real life, like currently live going through like that sounds more like I go to couples therapy with my husband every week. I'm like, that's like probably what your podcast is. Sometimes it feels like that. Sometimes we yeah. work through things. Yeah. Yeah. But like, but, like and- the only the only way I know to live, Emily, is on reality TV. So like I'm used to all my shit being out there. I don't know any different. I don't know what it's like to really have privacy, you know? (laughs) Right. But then I guess there is something totally freeing about that at the same time. Cause you're like, this is who I am and this is what I'm going through. Like you're not hiding by behind anything. How does your husband feel about like hitting all of these topics and like entering fatherhood and like sharing all of that? Cause like, I feel like he's not like you in the sense that like grew up on TV and airing it out. So how does he feel about sharing all of this and like the learnings behind parenthood? I think he likes that aspect of it. Like he likes the things that we talk about. He loves, you know, I think for him, it is also like therapy, him being able to like get out his feelings about being a dad. I think what makes it hard is that it's just, I boss him around in this podcast (laughs) because I am the professional. I've done this for a really long time. So like, I need to let him speak more. I need to learn (laughs) to like let him shine a little bit more. I think that's probably where he's like, is this your podcast or is this our podcast? Like, do you want me to talk or do you want me to just be here listening to you? Like that kind of gets rough. But also, again, I'm a professional. I've been doing this for a really long time. I know how to steer this ship. (laughs) Absolutely. That totally makes sense. Is there any um, topic that you guys talk about on this podcast together that seems to resonate with people the most? Is it like, cause like for me, I think when I would hear a couple talking about like new parenthood, it would be like the relationship and how things are between like mom and dad during these phases. But is there anything specific that you're like, Oh, this is really resonating with people. Like they're really enjoying like X, Y, Z content that we're sharing. I mean, I feel like any time that we're honest about like how our, like Hartford is really difficult. Like people, like she, she's a crazy girl. She is the best <laughs> in the world. I always, we always remind ourselves that like we, we have, we see these TikToks that it's like, you know, the difficult child, the crazy girl, the one blah, blah, blah is going to be the one that changes the world. I'm like, yes, <laughs> let's remind ourselves that like, she is so strong and so tough and she's going to do wonderful things with that power. But she is, she is hard. She does not listen to us and she tantrums 24 seven. Like it's, And so when we go into detail about how we are struggling with that, I feel like people are like, yes, not alone, because it looked like your kid was perfect. And we just really wanted to make sure that she wasn't. People relate to that. And I think people also relate to the fact that, like, Bo and I are going through a different season in our relationship. And we we discuss that. Like, I saw that you did a TikTok where I think you were you went on a trip and you guys had cards, like cards that had questions on them. Yeah. Yes. Bo and I have done that before. Bo and I literally have done that before where we brought along with us like question game because when we would go on a date, we were like, fuck, what do we even talk about now? Like we've been with the kids all day. We've worked together all day. We've already talked about everything there is to talk about. What do we, are we going to sit at dinner in silence? So like, no, let's play this game. And like, that might seem unromantic, but like at the same time, that means you're so in it together all the time that like, like what a beautiful thing that is too, that like yes. you've committed to such a life together to where you've run out of things to say. 
That's actually so true. And I think what you mentioned earlier when you were saying like the transition from one to two kids, now you're man to man. So your husband's with one kid and you're with the other kid. Like that was a really big transition for us too. Cause I feel like you're like, oh, we're now we're just like an operating system. Like there's yes. no like breaks. Mm-hmm. There's no, like, we just need to keep the ship like moving forward. And like, yes. that is like, and keep everyone alive, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. so I feel like sharing anything about that in a relationship and like that change and transition would be super helpful, which is why I was kind of interested in the podcast and kind of, was there something that sparked you guys wanting to do that? Or it was just like, we're in this and I want to share the reality behind it. The, literally just that, just that yeah. we talk about where we're at once a week. You know what I mean? And not that much changes in a week. So you really have to talk about where you're at. When you have two kids, it's not like there's so much to talk about. You know, like I didn't do all these things. Like my life isn't that exciting anymore. So we have to just be honest about where we're at, even if it's like maybe the boring stage of our relationship. But again, it's like that everything's temporary. Everything. Absolutely. Yes. That totally resonates with me. Um, between your podcasts, two podcasts, the books, everything you do on social media, is there one main message or one thing that you're always trying to like accomplish slash get across to your listeners and the people who follow you? Cause I feel like you do have such a strong relationship with like the people who follow you and love you and like watched you grow up. Is there one thing you're trying to accomplish with like everything that you're putting out and like your third book that's coming up? That's such a good question. I don't think that there's one overarching message. I think it's more so that like I'm I'm very driven by like a moment when like someone comes up to me and they were like I listened to your podcast and it got me through A B and C or like your book made me feel so less alone. Knowing that I can connected with someone and and to, to feel like I had I added value to somebody's life, I enhanced their life in in some way. Like that's kind of the goal to like make that connection. But the messages always change depending on where where I'm at in my life. Yeah. And I feel like even just talking to you now, I feel like something that I get from you is that you really encourage yourself and others to be like authentically themselves, which is like such a clear and important message too. Thank you. Yes. Like that is like maybe the theme of my life. I owe any success that I have at all. I feel feel like because I am just trying to be transparent. Like that's it. So like if you don't like it, you don't have to like it. If you don't have to take in this content, you were you don't have to sit here if you don't want to sit here. But like literally I think that's the only reason I'm successful whatsoever. Yeah, I think that's awesome and like Very relatable and important. My next question for you and a question that I ask all of my guests, because this is the remodeling podcast, are you going through any big remodels right now, personally, professionally, emotionally? I may already know the answer to this, but like, what is a big change that you are currently going through slash tackling right now? My life is one whole big fucking (laughs) remodel right now. Truly. I'm trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel. I want to try and figure out who I am now because I don't know. I don't know if I ever will know who I am. I, I read all these celebrities, like these old, these celebrities who are older and they'll be like, I'm so sure of myself now. Like I don't, I'm not insecure. I don't doubt myself. I know who I am. I'm confident in who I am. And I'm like, what? You're telling me that the older you get, the, the more you know yourself? Because um, it's the reverse. When I was in my early 20s, I thought I fucking knew everything. I knew everything that I stood for. I knew, I, like, I. it's embarrassing how self-assured yeah. I was. Like, it's embarrassing. But so the true. older I get, the more I'm like, who the fuck am I? Who am I? What do I like doing? What are my favorite colors? <laughs> like, what do I do? Like, who do I want to hang out with? What do I want to wear? Like, what do I stand for? Like, I, I don't, it, because I feel like when you become a mom, like life is always changing with every new age that your kid is turning. And it's just, it's, it's wild. So I'm just trying to figure out who I am right now. I completely, that's what it is. That's so relatable. And it's so true. When you're young, you're so naive and you're just like, this is what it is. And this is what I like. And I don't care what anyone thinks. But then once you become a mother, there's just so much more gravity to every single choice and decision decision and every single thing you say and think and like how that'll leak into your family life. So there's so much more pressure to like get it right. 
Um, yes. So that is so relatable and so awesome. Okay. My next question, what do you have next coming up for your community? I mean, you shared about your book. Is there an ETA on that? Like what are people looking forward to from you? No ETA. Sorry to disappoint. I will say this year. <laughs> I will say this year. This year. No, 2024. No. Before it turns 2025, there will be a book out. Okay. So there's that. Um, no. And just my podcast right now. I li- like... Again, like I really have I've recognized since having kids that I like to focus on one thing at a time. If I'm spread too thin, then I'm just a miserable person to be around. So I'm just focusing all my attention on on that and my children right now. Beautiful. I love that. Where can everybody find you? At Stassi Schroeder. I'm pretty sure all of the ats. Yeah. TikTok, Instagram. It's at Stassi Schroeder. If you want to listen to my podcast, it's straight up with Stassi. Um, and then I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Stassi, where you can listen to the good, the bad, the baby. Yeah, lots of listening. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. 